All right, so this is part four of the uh, Jeep Cherokee rebuild project. Now, a little backstory to this Jeep. Uh, once again, this is a Jeep Cherokee XJ uh, 1996 that we got off of Facebook. Actually, a uh, yard sale group on Facebook for our town. So I guess you could kind of say I got this thing at a yard sale. <laughs> so there's that. Uh, once again, $700 uh, Jeep Cherokee. SE actually, which you might not be able to tell, but uh, did upgrade the rims. I mentioned that in a previous video, but originally, once again, this started off as a uh, SE, which was the base model for the Cherokee. So right around $17,000, so pretty cheap for a uh, four wheel drive SUV for back then. Uh, came with really no options in this case, other than mine actually came with a, uh, the manual or not the manual, the uh, power windows and the power locks. So there's that, not even some uh, Laredo uh, Jeep Cherokees that I've seen on websites and stuff came with that. So very interesting uh, that mine being a base model actually came with that. So there's that. Um, so let's go ahead and go on to the uh, things that I've done since part three. If you guys want to go and see the part three and part two and part one, obviously, uh, go ahead and just scroll through my videos and they will be there all within a month or two of each other. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with some of the things, once again, that I've done since part three. So first thing, um, this isn't really like a big deal or anything back here, uh, but here I installed a tow hitch. Now this is one we just had lying around, so I said, heck, why not install it here? Maybe I'll tow some stuff uh, someday. Well, one thing I, I do have to say, one thing that I'm actually kind of uh, impressed, I guess you could say, um, is that this thing is actually, okay, I'm gonna put all my weight on here. Ow, hurt my toe there, slipped off. Anyway, you can see here, that's uh, what, 150 pounds there? And this thing is so gosh darn rusty. And it somehow held on. So I was quite uh, surprised by that to see that this tow bar is actually like, can actually work. Even with all the darn rust this thing has, which I'll get into a little bit of more of that uh, later on here. So, um, gosh, more big things. Um, I guess one of the biggest things that I can say, now this happened in, I believe it was part two or part three of this Cherokee Rebuild project, is these rims, okay? Now this one's again happened a while ago. Uh, but these rims, I got these from a uh, junkyard for about $100 for all four. Uh, they also came with tires, but they're just completely ruined. So I threw those away and got the tires that were on the old rims. I'll put them on here since they still have decent tread. Uh, so here's these rims. Now, once again, I got these from the junkyard for $100. You can see here. Uh, the back two are in pretty all right condition, but the front two are not in so much uh, good condition. You can see they have a little bit of clear coat peel, stuff like that. But uh, overall, I can't complain for $100. So there's that very big uh, thing that happened um, no matter of like, what, four months ago or something like that, but still very happy with it. Um, in a few minutes here, actually, I'll, uh, those are them over there. I'll actually show you guys the old rims that were on this thing. Uh, keep in mind, they were the base rims, and they were made of aluminum. And let's just say they didn't hold up very well over time. But uh, I'll go and show you guys that in a little bit here once we're done uh, going over the Jeep. So let's go ahead and go on to the actual big thing that has happened. And that is, go and show you guys over here. Open up the door. And we have removed the, the uh, floor pan. Now, if you guys remember, in part two, I showed you guys whenever I took the carpet out because the carpet was the most disgusting thing you'll ever see. It was horrible, especially on this side, which I'll go over in a minute. Um, so this thing here, uh, I removed the floor pan yesterday and I drove through the spot welds here, which don't worry. Yes, I did th drill through the frame here to get the spot welds out, but don't worry. I will be welding that all back in so then it gets its structural uh, support back. So don't worry about that. Once again, I will fix it there. Um, but anyways, I took the old floorboard out simply because it was way rusted. Okay, now I'm sad to say, but if you have a Cherokee, um, you are probably going to have the same issue I did. Now, that issue is 
the famous, <laughs> uh, infamous, I guess you could say, uh, Jeep Cowl Leak. Yeah, so this thing, uh, basically underneath this little cover here, uh, there's a little bit of like a trough, okay? And what happens, water goes in here, obviously, to drain out. So water goes in here, it runs along both sides, and it comes out uh, behind the fender here. And in there, in that little trough, there is a fresh air intake duct for the AC. Um, I would assume it wouldn't be for the heat, but it might be. I don't know. Uh, but it's for the AC, and there's a little seal around that intake duct. And over time, what happens is that it gets dried out, and it starts cracking, and that lets water in. And guess where the water goes? Right in to your cabin. Which in turn uh, keeps or gets underneath your carpet, ruins your carpet, ruins your floorboard. Um, now in this case, the water comes from right there. You can actually see where it's been coming in for the past 10 years or so. Right there where it's kind of like blue and worn away, that's where the water's been. And it comes in from under there, runs down the firewall here, goes here in the bottom of the floorboard. And once again, ruin your car ruins the carpet because it's going to be wet and rust out your floorboard. So I'm sad to say, if you have a Cherokee XJ um, of actually all model years, sadly, uh, your floorboard and carpet will probably have this issue. And once again, in my case, my carpet was the most disgusting thing you'll ever see. Let's just put it that way. Um, part one, I showed you guys that. If you wanna look at that, go to part one of this Cherokee rebuild. It was horrible. This, the most disgusting thing ever. Um, anyways, this is the floorboard here. Now it looks um, a little bit worse than it did previously, but the rust issue is still the same. Right here is where it rusted out, and then right here is also where it rusted out. This is not caused by cutting. This was from rust. So there it is. You can see it rusted a huge hole in here, and it also rusted down here, uh, which is now kind of all bent up, but there's a pretty decent hole there. Um, so it completely ruined this floor pan, um, but luckily we do have a new one, which I'll show off uh, a little bit later on in the video here. So there's that. Um, had to take out the old floor pan to weld in the new one, which hopefully we will get going uh, somewhat soon since now I have a huge hole in my passenger side of my Jeep, which uh, it's not ideal, especially since it's getting to be winter and it's going to be moist out. And uh, I definitely don't want anything in here getting uh, water damaged. So there's that. Um, you can see, once again, the frame here, which I'm actually kind of surprised about the condition of this thing. Now, in the rear, um, I'll show you guys this too. But uh, anyways, up here, uh, the frame is in actually very good condition. There's not a single bit of rust on this thing. So very impressed by the frame condition up here, um, especially considering, once again, this thing was only $700. But back here, the frame is... A different story uh, right there yeah that's a hole not good and that's on both sides uh, but that other than that hole right there which is a pretty big issue this frame is in very good condition um, so there's that I really need to get back there and get a, uh, a little camera and poke it up in there to uh, see the condition of the inside of the frame but that back part uh, not good news. So I might be able to fix that though with uh, frame stiffeners. They do sell those for like off-roading and stuff. Um, I might just buy one of those, weld it back there, and uh, they'll basically add all the structural support back. Um, but anyways, moving back to a floorboard, here it is. Once again, all cut out. You can see the exhaust pipe and stuff right there. Uh, so pretty successful removing that. I just need to do a little bit more of work. Uh, sand down the rivets here that are left. And... Um, cut the new floorboard to size and weld it in and then I get my new carpet in my new headliner which once again I'll show that all in a little bit here near the end of the video and this thing will be pretty much set now the other big thing that has happened is I got my radio installed yeah now I'm actually going to move this box here so I can sit in the driver's side seat I've been standing for too long if I get this thing moved nah I don't want to hurt my seat so I'm going to have to remove it from the other side but there's that so Move the trim piece here so I don't ruin it. Close the door here, go around to the back, and hop in the driver's side seat. So, 
just gonna move this box now and I'll show you guys, there we go. I'll show you guys the stereo I got installed now. This one here, this is a Sony x -Blod. You can see right there, uh, the model number and stuff. There it is. Uh, now this one actually came with uh, this Jeep here, um, not when it was factory or anything, uh, but the previous owner or one of the previous owners, this thing has had six owners. Uh, yeah, quite insane. Um, but anyways, one of those previous owners installed this stereo and they also installed, installed the speakers, which uh, they're not here anymore. And that's for a very good reason. So uh, let's go and start off with this stereo and the speakers. So the stereo here, this is a Sony x -Plod. It came with like a guess, I guess you could call it a, uh, a package, if you want to call that. Now it was the uh, stereo here, along with the speakers. Uh, they sold this back in like, I guess, Walmart years ago. Um, but it came with the stereo and then 6.5 inch speakers, Sony speakers. Uh, now, if you guys know anything about Jeeps, especially these, uh, the front speakers are 5.25 inches, not 6.5. So the previous owner did not know that. And they just simply installed, installed so-called, the speakers in here, not at all in the factory hole or anything. They just screwed into whatever they could with one screw. Or, well, at least that's how it was on the driver's side. Might have been a different story on the passenger side, but on um, the driver's side is held in by one screw. Um, it's hanging out. It was not installed correctly in any way. It was just, it was horrible. It was the worst thing ever. Um, and pretty much that's the same story on the passenger side now. Fun, fun fact on the passenger side. Um, you know how when you're welding, or not welding, soldering wires, uh, positive and negative for speakers, Obviously, you don't want the negative and positive to touch. Otherwise, it will short and probably ruin your head unit. Well, um, at least the previous owner knew something about that. So what they did is for the negative terminal, it might have been the positive, but it's not even a terminal, but the wires, so then the solder joints don't touch each other. They separated them with a payday wrapper. Okay, this is not a joke. A payday wrapper. I, w I, I really wish now I showed it on video, but I didn't. Um, it was it was horrible. But they so they separated with a payday wrapper, which uh, is obviously in no way under any circumstance correct. Um, so that was just so jerry rigged, um, and pretty much the same story on the driver's side there, except it wasn't. But I have payday wrappers by like electrical tape, horrible electrical tape. Um, now also the head unit, which uh, was horrible too with wiring. Uh, when I pulled this thing out, only the driver's side was working. The passenger side wasn't working, even though it wasn't blown. The passenger side speaker wasn't blown. It just simply wasn't working because of the horrible wiring job uh, the previous owner did. Uh, now behind here, uh, the wires, they were not soldered. They were not crimped. They were nothing. They were just simply stuck into the wiring harness, um, through the little connections they have to connect to the back of the radio. They just simply stuck the wires back in there. Um, and it worked, um, but not very well at all. Um, so that was just, I, I was really blown away by the wiring job on this thing. Kind of made me a little bit scared. Um, but anyways, either way, I took the radio out took the speakers out and now I have correct size speakers in here. They are pioneers on both sides and I wired those correctly. I shrink wrapped them, soldered the wires, everything. So everything's correct now on both of these sides here. And I also did the same for the wiring for the head unit here. I soldered everything. I shrink wrapped everything. So now everything is correct or shrink sleeving, whatever you want to call it. So uh, everything is now correctly wired, uh, which is very good now because I definitely don't want to fire or, you know, one speaker stop working after I go over a bump or something like that because that's probably what actually happened to the previous owner. They went over a bump at the passenger side speaker stopped working. But uh, anyway, so there's that. Got my stereo kind of installed. Um, I still have more to do. I need to do, I need to wire up the rear sound bar, which I got uh, from the junkyard also. Um, which I'll be showing also in a little bit here. And um, 
gosh, what else? The subwoofer, yeah, that's what I meant to say. I actually have the subwoofer in here, right there. It's a kicker 10 inch, I believe the model number is PT250. Might be wrong about that. Um, I'll show that off once again in a little bit here. So there's that. Uh, I need to get my subwoofer installed and also the rear speakers, but I'll go and uh, actually hop out of the car here so I can get the key out of my pocket. Uh, but there it all is. So it's definitely coming together slowly but surely. Um, and it will be done uh, some sometime soon, I guess. Let's go and hop in here. And I'll close the door so it doesn't do that horrible buzzing sound that every Jeep owner hates. So let's go and put the key in the ignition here. And yes, just give it a second. It will buzz for a second. Saying seatbelt. There we go. Thank you, Jeep. Okay, so um, okay, so in here I actually have a uh, a CD that came with the car. Uh, it's a Gorilla CD, but I'll move to Tuner for now. And okay, so I need to find a better station. But fun fact, uh, the Tuner AM FM did not work when I first got this Cherokee, and I did absolutely nothing to fix it. Uh, it just started working. I guess maybe there's a back connection in the back, and when I put it out or took it out and put it back in, it fixed itself. But either way, it's working now. Okay, it's still static. Oh. So there's that. It is getting radio stations now. Uh, static, static. Eh, pretty much static. Oh, didn't mean to click that. Whoops. Okay, now it's back to AM. There we go, FM. So there we go, AM, FM. Now I'm going to go and switch to uh, the CD here. And once again, this is Gorillas. That's in between. I need to have bass in this song to show you guys how good these speakers are. They're pretty decent in my opinion. So there's that. Um, so in my opinion, sounds pretty darn good. Now it's going to get even better when I get those rear speakers installed. Along with my subwoofer, it's actually going to have decent amount of a bass. So there's that. So uh, definitely a lot better than... Um, the previous owner, I actually wired this correctly and stuff like that, all on my own too. Found out, I do its thing. Um, I did find out the, like what wires went to what and stuff like that, all on my own. I just searched it up on the internet and it was all correct. So uh, very happy, very proud of myself for that. So uh, what I'll go and do now is uh, actually show you guys, um, I guess I'll do the sound bar first. Yeah, I'll show you guys the sound bar, then I'll show you guys the subwoofer, or not the, uh, I'll show you guys the sound bar, I'll show you guys the headliner, carpet, subwoofer, and maybe something else, and um, then the rims. So there's that, so let's go and do that now. All right, so I haven't shown you guys this yet in all of the other parts, but here is the sound bar. You can see, once again, got this thing from the junkyard, but I uh, spray painted it black since the headliner material was just falling off of it. So here is the kicker speakers that I have installed here. These are like 50 bucks at Walmart. Um, and once again, there's one on this side, obviously the other on the other side. You can see here, I'm gonna try to flip this thing over without scratching it or breaking in half because it is made out of fiberglass, I believe. Uh, but anyways, you can see there the magnet, stuff like that, uh, model number there. It's gonna see DSC50. Four ohm. So there's that. It's gonna set it back down here slowly. All right. So there's that. So now I'll go and get onto the carpet and the other things there. Now these were made two different times. I actually did the uh, carpet video um, and stuff like that first. The carpet clip, and um, I'm doing all this last. So let's go now. Uh, for me, I'm gonna be moving on to the rims, but for you guys, it's gonna be now the uh, carpet. So there's that. All right, so here we are in the garage, and you can see right here, now I haven't shown this yet, here is my new headliner. Now all the holes in it, and actually a dead bug of some sort, that's kind of odd. Um, anyways, it's been here for a few months, so I can't uh, really complain. It's all dirty, you can see, once again, it's been down here for a few months, so not surprised. Um, you can see here, we cut the holes for like that, is for the dome light. Uh, those over there are for the uh, rear seat belt. 
right there. So there's that. So the headliner is all taken care of. We just need to simply get it installed now. You can see it's a very nice material. Um, also underneath here, we have the, if I can move this headliner off this side, this thing is very delicate. Definitely don't want to break it in half, which is very simple to do. <laughs> um, anyways, here is the new carpet you see right here. Brand new. It's just a little bit dirty once again because it's been down here for a few months. Um, but here it is. Once again, very nice new carpet. I think this thing was like $150. Um, I believe it's from Auto Custom Carpets. I'm pretty sure it's called. Um, also, you can see it has sound under material and stuff like that. So uh, pretty nice. So here's that, the new carpet. Um, also, two more things. Three. Yeah, actually, three more things I'm going to show you right quick. I'm going to show you the subwoofer, which is right over there, uh, the um, soundbar, which is upstairs, and then I'll also, lastly, show you guys the old rims that I had, because I assume you guys are interested in that. So here's that new carpet and the new headliner. headliner. Uh, let me go, and go ahead and go over to the kicker. All right, so here is the uh, kicker subwoofer we're going to be using. Uh, you can see here it comes with a base knob with a pretty long uh, aux cord, actually. Uh, pretty nice base knob here. And you can see here is the uh, subwoofer itself, kicker 10-inch, obviously. Uh, once again, I believe the model number is PT250. I'm 99% sure, but uh, if you guys want to see this thing, go on Walmart site because I believe this is actually discontinued. Only Walmart sells it. Um, so if you want to see this thing, go on Walmart site. Uh, just simply put in a 10-inch kicker, and I believe this thing would be the first to show up. But uh, anyways, here it is. You can see the built-in amplifier on the side here. Uh, kicker base station right there. And all the controls and stuff. So there it is. Uh, now, I have already tested this out uh, just to see how it sounds. And I would say it sounds um, pretty all right, in my opinion. Now, keep in mind, for $200, I believe that's how much it was. It was 208 for me, but I believe on their side, it's, they said it was 250 Or not 250 200 So, uh, there it is. But keep in mind, for $200, you're getting a box, you're getting the sub, and then you're also getting an amplifier. So, in my opinion... Uh, pretty all right value for a uh, $200 and you're also getting this nice little base knob here. So uh, there's that. So pretty good in my opinion, a little kicker. And also down here, we have the uh, floorboard that I'm going to be welding in. I forgot this thing was down here. Uh, so let's go and move to gloves here. You can see here is the, um, the new floorboard that I'm going to be welding in. I'll go and get you guys a quick little uh, video of the... Uh, Label here in case you guys are wondering. There it is right there. Made by Tri Plus, I believe it is. So there's that. So very cool. So let's go to now go down and show off the uh, last thing, which are the old rims that I had on the Cherokee that looked absolutely horrible. So uh, let's go and do that now. All right, so now these are the old rims that were on the Jeep now. Uh, this stuff right here, it might look like brake dust, but that is not brake dust. Uh, that is just simply rust. You can see here I'm rubbing it. There's no dirt on my finger. So that is not brake dust. That's just pure rust. Uh, anyways, you can see here they were absolutely horrible. They were just the worst things ever. Um, so these definitely did not hold up very well over time. Although the, uh, the um, spare tire did actually, which uh, kind of makes sense. I mean, it's in the vehicle the whole time so of course it's going to hold up well but uh anyways this one here all four of these there's only three here but all four did not hold up well at all uh, so there's that so uh now this is going to be the last clip uh previously i showed you guys the four pan and stuff like that so i'll go and go uh i guess do my outro now so uh yeah there it is so the part four of the jeep cherokee rebuild hopefully part five will be the last pretty near at least the last part of actually rebuilding the jeep um we are getting somewhat close now all i need to do the only thing that's holding me back from really getting this thing going is simply that floor pan okay we need to weld that in and then i could get my carpet installed which means the passenger seat all the trim pieces stuff like that and then i need to i'm also waiting on welding uh the floor pan in to i get my 
a headliner installed because obviously you don't want to be welding with a bunch of like cloth around which is up here so don't want to catch that on fire or possibly ruin it by sparks so i'm gonna wait to number one obviously install the carpet and install the headliner and then i'm also waiting on simply installing my stereo system until i get the welding done also so literally everything that needs to be done to this vehicle is held back simply because of this welding so once we get the welding done that's when i could get everything done so hopefully part five will be the very last part uh to this jeep cherokee rebuild and Part five will once again, it be completely back together. Now in that video, it's probably gonna be like an hour long, simply going over every single thing that I've done to this Cherokee. And at the end, I'll probably post like before and after pictures and stuff like that, um, which I can guarantee there will be a huge improvement, especially over the carpet, because that carpet originally was just the worst thing ever. Um, so there's that. So hopefully once again, part five will be this Cherokee completely done. So uh, there it is. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see y'all next time. Goodbye.